Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man here. If you're into home theater or two channel audio, this is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. With that said, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the SVS Ultra Towers. I'm going to be unhooking my power amplifier, the Acurus A200, and just powering them with the Harman Kardon HK3490 receiver. It's 120 watts by two, and I wanna see how well the SVS perform using just a receiver because I realize a lot of my audience do not have an amplifier. Maybe you're running it with just a two channel stereo or in a home theater stereo. So I wanna give you a good idea of how well they'll perform without a power amp. So with that said, we're gonna jump behind the audio cabinet, remove the power amp and connect the jumpers to the Harman Kardon. So let's get into it. Okay, so inside my audio cabinet, You'll see I have a Harman Kardon HK3490 receiver. It's a two-channel stereo receiver. Typically, I'm coming out of the two-channel receiver using the pre-outs going into this Acurus A200 amplifier, which is 200 by two. But today, we're gonna unhook this Acurus and just power the SVS Ultra Towers with the Harman Kardon. So let's go behind the cabinet and unhook the amplifier. Okay, so here's the back of the entertainment center. As you can see, I try to keep all my cables organized just using zip ties and winding up my cables. I like to keep the clutter down to a minimum when I can. So I'm gonna lift this receiver up to kind of let us get a better look at what's going on in here. We're just gonna slide this kind of right to the edge. Get some of these cables out of the way. There we go. Now we'll be able to see what's going on. Okay, for those of you that have never hooked up an amplifier, an external amplifier to a receiver, basically the way that this works is some two-channel receivers and home theater receivers have what they call pre-outs. Now the pre-outs is a non-powered signal that you would take an RCA cable, a pair of them, so one for left, one for right. It comes out of your receiver, one goes to the left channel, and the other one goes up to your right channel. So those are inputs, so you come out of here, into here and then the amplifier you come out of here with speaker wire out to your speakers so in this case what i want to do is i want to remove the accuracy from the equation and so what we're going to need to do is number one remove these two rca cables because we're no longer going to be using the pre-outs on the Harman Kardon. okay so now that we have the rcas removed on the back of the receiver you can see this section says pre-out so for the pre-out, you have a left channel, which is your white, and a right channel, which is the red. And then right next to it, you'll see this main end that also has a left channel and a right channel. So when I bought the Harman Kardon, it came with these little metal jumpers. And so typically, if you do not have an amplifier hooked up, the way that the Harman Kardon knows that you're wanting to use the internal amplification and use the speaker wire and speaker outputs here, is you would have these metal jumpers installed. So what we wanna do is connect the pre-out of the right to the main end on the right channel, just using this RCA jumper. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the left channel. So pre-out left to pre-out right. And so with those two jumpers installed, the receiver now is going to send the signal out of the pre-out and then it's gonna come right back into the receiver, feed it over here to the stereo outputs, your left and right channel. Now, once again, you'll see I have these connected with banana plugs and banana plugs are incredibly convenient. They literally just slide in to the binding post and you can just easily remove them. And if you watch my previous video on banana plugs, you'll see some ones that I recommend. These aren't exactly my favorite, um, and I shared that with you why, but these hardly ever get removed, so they work just fine for this setup. So we're gonna remove the right channel. And we're gonna come down here to where it says speaker one. So if you look at the back of the receiver, you'll see the Harman Kardon can actually power two sets of speakers. So we've got speaker set one, and then down here we got speaker set two. We're only gonna be using speaker set one because we're only hooking up two speakers. So we're gonna connect the right channel 
We're going to plug the red into the red and the black into the black. Just color code those. And for the left channel, you'll notice they used white. That's not a big deal. You just want to make sure that you connect the negative to the negative, then your other one's going to be positive. So in this case, we're going to connect black to black and then red to the white. So see how much simpler using banana plugs are? You just slide them right in. You don't have to worry about untwisting. You don't have to worry about bare wire touching each other and shorting out your receiver. Now that we have the receiver back to its normal factory configuration to where the receiver is using its own internal power amps, we're gonna fire it up and see how the Harman Kardon 3490 120 by two effectively powers the SVS Ultra Towers. So let's move the cabinet back in place. Let's crank them up. All right, let's just move the Harman Kardon back down. Slide it back in place. Plug our speaker wire in with the banana plugs. And we're good to go. In my first session with the SVS Ultra Towers, I had them pretty close to the entertainment center and fairly close to the wall. In this listening session, I want to move them out a little bit further tow them in slightly a little bit more and move them away from the wall to see how that might affect the sound. I typically use the wood planks on the floor to kind of mark the front and edges of the speakers to make sure they're proportionate. And I tend to like to aim the speakers just slightly behind my listening position. Now that I have the SVS Ultra Towers repositioned, let's go ahead and demo some music. I'm going to spend some time listening to a variety of music. While I do my testing, I'll let you hear a sample of how the SVS Ultras sound in their new position with just the Harman Kardon. Hope you enjoy.
Okay, so I've spent quite a while listening to different styles of music, different songs and tracks on the SVS Towers, just being powered by the Harman Kardon 3490 receiver. On several occasions, I would add the amplifier back into the mix to kind of see how did the sound change or did it change when I added the Acurus A200, which is a 200 by two channel amp to the mix. I found that when I added the Acurus back into it, the SVS really began to shine. You can power them just fine with the receiver. I was able to get up to pretty high levels without it distorting or breaking up. However, when I added the Acurus A200, I noticed the sound really began to come alive. Saxophone had so much detail when I added the amplifier. Bass seemed to have more punch and more authority. It just had a beautiful sound to it. I've always loved the way the Acurus sound. It's a quality build amp. It's an older amp. It's not one of their newer ones. Acurus does have a replacement for that one. It's the A2002. Mine is the older A200. But Acurus makes solid amps and I'm very pleased with its performance over the years. Also notice by moving the SVS out away from the entertainment center, as well as out from the wall some, it really, really opened up the sound stage as well as provided just a better overall enveloping sound. Imaging was really, really nice once I did that. So overall, once again, the SVS speakers sound really good. The highs are definitely a little different than I'm used to, but it's not a bad sound, it's just a different sound. It's more laid back, not quite as detailed as what I'm used to. The mid-range was really good. The bass by far is the most impressive part of these speakers. I'm really, really surprised at how well the dual eight inch drivers perform in this pretty large room. I mean, this room is roughly 25 feet wide by 15 feet deep with 12 foot ceilings. Over there, it opens up to the home office and then the dining room, the kitchen's directly behind me and a breakfast nook. So this is a lot of room to try to fill with good quality sound. And I believe the SVS Ultra Towers do just that. Also tried with and without the port plugs. What I found with that is when I inserted the port plugs, the bass was definitely more muted. Um, there was less bass, but the bass seemed a little bit cleaner. Wasn't a huge difference, but my ears preferred without the plug. Maybe that's just because I like a lot of bass and in this room I don't have a dedicated subwoofer. So if you have a dedicated subwoofer, you may want to try putting the plug in there and then playing it with the subwoofer to see if that can tighten up the bass and sound more natural. But I think these speakers have a lot of versatility with them. So you can run them in a two channel setup with a sub or without a sub and still get really, really nice solid bottom end. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, you guys be blessed. We'll catch you in the next video.